putting an end to identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. The Berkshire Eagle. This is a liberal newspaper, um, and it is urging uh, the Massachusetts Democrat Liz Warren uh, to take the spit test. Welcome back, everybody. Take the spit test. Elizabeth Warren is not too much to ask, is it? And I, I don't play that. I don't care about Elizabeth Warren's ethnicity and all that in, in, in as much as, you know, what we've been talking about, other than the fact that she lied about it. That's all I care about. She lied. That's what Demo- Democrats do. And they become mockeries of themselves. In fact, let's play this other clip. This is CBS talking about the millennials on colleges. And the Washington Post looks at a survey out this morning that says college students support free speech unless it offends them. A poll of 3,000 U.S. <laughs> students revealed they generally endorse campuses that encourage the discussion of a variety of ideas, but they're willing to limit free speech if the ideas infringe on their personal values. We all need to learn more about what free speech <laughs> right, 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 is. That's right. Yeah. Right. They like all food unless it tastes bad. Right. The dramatic... <laughs> Keep in mind, folks, that's CBS mocking its own. That's pretty funny. CBS saying, you know what? <laughs> they, yeah, they're for free speech unless you disagree with them. They're for free speech, except it has to be this kind of speech. And they're mocking them. By the way, for the kids that are out there listening to this program, if you believe that nonsense, you're going to get a rude awakening. Because let me tell you something. If you've got come up in a an environment where everybody agrees and then you go to the hood, for example, and people don't agree with you. And I, I would just love to plop these kids out of academia and put them into a circumstance where they're like, what just happened to me? And watch them. They are so unprepared for the world. It's ridiculous. Prepare your kids for the world. It's going to be the easiest world out there. I, when I grew up, uh, you know, it was, it was ingrained in me, Kevin, the way you're going to distinguish yourself in the world as a young black man is to, you know, study hard, make sure that you, you people find you a person of substance, a person of you know character, good moral fiber, and, you know, not frivolous or whimsical and fun to be around. Don't take life too seriously. Don't look for excuses and be accountable and on and on. These are all good qualities, qualities I passed on certainly to my sons. And one of the things that, that uh, I, I'll never forget, but, you know, my great grandfather made made us say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. And my white friends would be like they talk to their parents and their parents would say something like that. They would be like, what? You know, uh huh. And yeah, and I mean, I'm talking about with emphasis. And this friend of mine, his name is Eddie. <laughs> Eddie used to talk to his dad like they were brothers. And his dad talked back to my, like it was his big brother. Eddie, I told you to get that out of the truck. Dog going to dad, but he would curse. And his dad would say, just do what I told you. You know, I mean, it was like the two big, big brothers. And I remember my brother and I, when Eddie said, you know, GD to something his dad said, and we looked at each other like we would be beaten i mean we would be killed if we tried that crap with our grandmother who raised us and um but that's the way it was but here's what i'll tell you i don't know what eddie's doing he's a he's a fun guy and and i'm not no disrespect intended to him because a lot of from my friends listen to my show but here's the deal i know this my saying yes sir and yes ma'am no sir and no ma'am got me further in life than if i hadn't said it i know that I didn't say it, by the way, to impress anybody. I said it because my great grandfather told me this is the man you're going to become, whether you like it or not. And I remember when he uh, when he put that rule down, when my brother and I stayed the summer with him and he said we would say, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah. And what? And he goes, hey, that doesn't work here. And he told us what we had to say. And we we made a mistake one time. And I'm not lying. My grand my great grandfather said, not untold you, boys. It's yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, sir. No, ma'am. And the next time we did it, he came around that corner with his belt, grabbed us and begins to whoop in that butt. (laughs) 
And I just remember going, what, what, what? And my great grandfather's whipping my butt and he's telling me every lick. I told you to say yes, sir. No. And then he got, ran and got my brother and did the same thing. And we didn't forget it anymore. And when we got home, yeah, p- people think I'm lying when I tell these stories, but it's, they, don't look at me. I'm crazy. When we got home, the my great grandfather called my grandmother. I think we were home two days and they were talking and I heard my grandmother going, yeah, they still doing it, daddy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he was asking my grandmother, are those boys still saying, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, no, sir, no, ma'am? Because I told them they better. And he never said it again. The rule was never enforced again by my grandmother or grandfather. That was the end of it. And I've said it from the moment from that butt whooping on forward to every grown up I've ever met. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Nice to meet you. Whatever. And people look at it. Oh, you want him? Yes. Sir. You know, yes, sir, ma'am. Yes, sir, then. No, I'm not. You call me, you can make that whatever you want to make it. Let me tell you what I am. I'm a product of a great man. My great grandfather, who I have the most respect for as a man in the world. The most. You can put Donald Trump, you can put Gandhi, you can put MLK, you know, you can put any anybody on the, that you want in that, that category. My great grandfather is the person I respect the most. Yeah, I've gotten advice from many people. I've read the work of the great scholars. What I'm telling you is my great grandfather is the person I respect the most. That's just it. It's really that simple. A lot of great people out there. A lot of people that I want to have dinner with or hang out with. And what I was literally within six feet of Denzel Washington. He came to St. Louis to see his son play football. And I just gave him a quick hello and I walked on past. And he's a guy I have a lot of respect for. Would have loved to have gone over to Denzel and said, hey, man, I love your work and, you know, or whatever. But he's just a guy to me. My great grandfather, I wanted to sit down and talk to him. That's how important he was to me. And I hope that that's the, the way you feel about many of your elders. Anyway, my whole point of this thing is that the left are beginning to mock What's going on? Elizabeth Warren's being mocked, not just Fox News played a clip, you know, of Pocahontas and the, but the, the left are mocking Elizabeth Warren. And when what you notice when she dropped out of the race is they're essentially saying you got no, no, you're done. Think about it. Two years ago when they were fast tracking Elizabeth Warren, telling her, you know, giving her the best jobs in the Senate, gearing her up to run for president, even at one point considering dropping her in for Hillary. And now she's gone from two years of being the on the fast track to being the next president of the United States, if Hillary didn't make it, to dropping out. And the same will happen with Kamala Harris and anybody else. They The Democrats are grasping at straws right now. Then CBS, the lamestream media, they're mocking college kids. Oh, yeah, we, we want free speech as long as it's our speech. And they're, they can't even control their laughter. Yeah. We love all food except the foods we don't love. You know, they're mocking them. And there's many other things I could tell you where they're being mocked. I played a thing on a millennial who says I'm for Trump. If you don't think that there are more millennials out there for Trump. And and here's what I also want to do. I want to I want to play a clip of another one of these things where they don't want you to know. But nobody wants to take credit for Farrakhan. Republican Jewish coalition asking seven long serving Democrats to resign this week, claiming that they have ties to Louis Farrakhan, who had a message of hate again two weeks ago. Here's a portion of this issued statement uh, saying this. There can be no question about how important it is for these Democrats to be connected to Louis Farrakhan. Farrakhan is first and foremost a preacher of hate. Uh, That organization doesn't have any credibility with me. I know they have a political agenda. Yeah. Um, my record has shown that I've spoken out against anti-Semitism, homophobia, Islamophobia, xenophobia, all of the phobias. They said that you were at a meeting with Louis Farrakhan and he's anti-Jew, anti-gay, well, anti-white. Well, so, and so, so they want to... I, 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 I have met with him as have other members of the Black Caucus, but I've met with him as, as other members of the Black Caucus have met with him talking about anti-crime efforts. Uh, discrimination against women and those kinds of things. But I condemn any form of discrimination. I've been consistent. 
Welcome back, everybody. That was Andre Carson, member of the Congressional Black Caucus, being held to task for meeting with Farrakhan, and that's his excuse. Well, I've met with him, yeah. yeah. Can you imagine if Donald Trump met with a member of the Klan or actually met with David Duke? He's never met the guy, but if he met with him, sat down and said, look, we talked about everything except all that, that anti-Semitism and that hatred of blacks and that hatred of Jews or hatred of whatever, yeah, but we didn't discuss any of that. Yeah, but I sat down, I met with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's the left. They are walking, talking contradictions. They want you to pretend that you don't see what they do. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.